Hey, beautiful people, it's me again. Yay! Um, so, I'm just dropping in to talk to you about the Kahal Belief Changer, and the changer for this week was Sunshine Tanasco. And so, Sunshine Tanasco is the founder of a company called Her Braids, um, which is essentially a. It's hard to describe. So, part of her passion is actually. Um, have indigenous having access to clean water which in this day and age would think everyone has access to clean water haha <laughs> no they don't um and the statistics oh my god i was like watching some reading some of the statistics on her page and stuff um so her braids some of the statistics are 73 percent of first nations water systems are at high or medium risk and that basically means of like pollution or of um like shit that's in the water that you shouldn't be consuming yourself um and this is for North America, so for mostly around Canada. Um, 164 water advisories that affect 117 First Nation communities. So these are advisories basically like, you know, the water's dangerous, you shouldn't be drinking the water, it probably has like all these kind of not so nice things that you want to be consuming. Um, 1,880 First Nation homes are without water services. My God, that's appalling, people. Do better. Um... In 15 years, I'm sorry, I'm going to completely butcher this name. Um, Kitigan Zibi Aganashabeg went without clean water, um, and they're basically 1.5 hours away from the nation's capital. Like, two thirds of First Nations have been under at least one water advisory between 2004 and 2014. Like, these are pretty appalling statistics, um, and they're appalling statistics because they are in apparently developing countries. Um, we're talking about Canada here, but you know it can be just as applicable, I imagine, in other locations. Um, and so, her braids is essentially started out as a um, like a shop where there were these particular products, um, and they were these beautiful kind of like pendants and stuff like that and um it was like a reminder a reminder of that of that you know first nations have sometimes really appalling access to clean water um and so that was one of her programs and another one of the programs um that she is involved in at the moment sorry not programs but companies um is a company called powwow pitch and so this was born out of her very first business that she started which was so cute baby moccasins yay oh my god i even want some but she doesn't sell them um and so she pitched to dragon's den now i don't know if you know dragon's den but essentially what they are is a um a group of people maybe like four or five people um they're on a kind of panel and they basically give money to people who pitch to them these certain business ideas and essentially involves um so it's actually funding so you know they take a percentage of their business and so she pitched to these dragon scene people um and was pregnant at that time and they were like you know if you had asked for xyz you needed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to start like this manufacturing company within your um indigenous community we would have supported you um but she asked for 20k because she was like that's all i knew to ask for you know i didn't know you could ask for more and all these kind of things so this led to this particular um idea for a business which was powwow pitch and so if you don't know a powwow is essentially a gathering of First Nations people um, and it is like a cultural celebration there's food there's dancing there's drumming um, and the pitch component came so everyone submits this application and they submit a 60 minute pitch and so the pitches that get accepted they get money to help develop their business idea um, and so yeah the powwow pitch was kind of born and so her journey it's pretty interesting it's pretty amazing um and she's actually oh, really quite um <laughs> light-hearted about her journey that she's undergone and i think one of the things that stood out the most besides her just amazing story and her kind of vitality and vivacity for the things that she does is um failure you know is just a word 
um, failure to hurt isn't failure, it's a lesson to be learned on the road of life kind of thing or on the experience that is an entrepreneur. Um, and I thought that was something that was very evident in the conversation um, and the talk that she was having with us because um, it's very evident that she has actually and she spoke um, a little bit further about it but her mentors and the people around her when she was growing up because she said that she grew up around women mostly um, there weren't many men in her kind of like family circle um, and because of that she grew up around women basically who didn't take no for an answer um, she spoke about a story about um, one of the women who wanted to go to university but couldn't actually read and so what she did is she actually connected with someone who was reading to her and um, letting her know what all the content and the curriculum and stuff was and she passed with a master's but she didn't know how to read and her actual master's was in literature um, so she just said we didn't you know, if you wanted something, you went after it and you never took no for an answer. Um, and it's very evident in the way that she's kind of run her businesses and the fact that she has learned lessons from every single experience in her business because that's kind of how she reframes it. It's not really a failure. It's just, you know, I learned to listen and I kind of acted accordingly and I changed my direction um, and my trajectory. So an amazing and fascinating woman and I really loved listening about her um, and she's actually just quite funny as well too um, the reason that powwow pitch started was because she um, pitched it, well technically she pitched it to an employer and the employer was like yeah no that's not going to work and kind of fired her and she just went well I'm going to have to prove to you that it can and it did and she's now in her um, so for the first year, she was really struggling to get sponsorship for $8,500. Now, I think it's in like the seventh year or something like that. Um, after the third year, basically, people were coming to her um, wanting to sponsor the event and be a part of it. Um, now, I think at that stage when she first started, it was $100 that she was handing out to Indigenous entrepreneurs. Now it's moved up to $25,000. And next year, which is 2022, the first prize will be $50,000. Um, and potentially it looks like it's expanding out from um, First Nations in Canada to America and potentially um, New Zealand, which is, I mean, it's the depth of the work and kind of the need of the work out there. And I think it's really, really amazing. Um, and she was an amazing belief changer and I really just loved listening to her story about, you know, her um, particular First Nations tribe. They've always been working with their hands up and quite nomadic as well at the same time. Um, and so, yeah, that's how she kind of started out doing baby moccasins made out of leather. And then she kind of moved on to this other thing with Power Hour Pitch from the lessons that she learned from that. And then she moved to her braids. They both started at the same time. Um, and she was actually hand beading um, these beautiful uh, pendants that you can wear. And so that is also something that I've noticed in a lot of the belief changes that we've had throughout the particular Kahao journey is that many of them do things with hands, like it is, it's a creative output and a creative endeavour um, that I think across the full kind of spectrum seems really, really important. Um, it's that connection back into our ancestors and stuff, you know, it's passing things down from one generation to the next. Um, and it's keeping it alive, that kind of heritage and that um, connection to our ancestors. Um, and I think the other thing as well was, <laughs> just didn't take no for an answer. Um, I'm just going to do this and I'm going to try and if I, you know, if whatever happens happens and I will adjust accordingly and I think that's a really amazing lesson to have as an entrepreneur um, in a business and just having that kind of mindset that they're not failures, they're just lessons that you need to learn um, along the journey and so i just like to say thank you and I will talk to you soon, ciao